time, Turkey has officially revealed the gruesome details of what exactly happened to the Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Turkey's chief prosecutor says Khashoggi was strangled to death as soon as he entered the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. Turkish investigators are still searching for Khashoggi's remains. Hashem Al-Rabara has the latest. As the Saudi chief prosecutor was on his way to travel back to his country, his Turkish counterpart released a statement detailing Jamal Khashoggi's final moments at the Saudi consulate. According to the horrifying account, Khashoggi was strangled to death as soon as he got into the consulate on the 2nd of October. His body dismembered and the rest remains shrouded in mystery. Turkish investigators are still trying to find out what happened to the remains of Khashoggi, who gave the order to kill him and the identity of the local cooperator tasked with disposing of the body. Irfan Fidan, Turkey's chief prosecutor, also said his counterpart, Saud al Majab, wasn't fully cooperating. Turkey blames Saudi Arabia for stalling the investigation. This is not an event that can be done without an order from a higher level. The organization of this event has been premeditated, as the Saudi chief prosecutor stated, and it has been done in such a brutal way as declared by our own chief prosecutor as well. He was killed as soon as he entered and, and was later dismembered. How far in advance has this brutal, heinous event been planned, and who gave the order? We are in a position to see this clearly. From the start, we haven't accused anyone, but we will not allow a cover-up. Saudi officials initially denied the outspoken journalist was killed, but backtracked under international pressure, admitting it was premeditated. The kingdom insists Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman had no knowledge of Khashoggi's fate. We'll get reaction from the White House uh, with our correspondent Mike Hanna in a moment. But first, to Hashem Ahalbara for more on the investigation in Istanbul. So, Hashem, these grim details emerging of how Khashoggi died. Indeed, Lauren, the first official statement from the Turkish government about the final moments of Jamal al Khashoggi. And they said it was planned. They say he ha they have been asking pushing the Saudi chief prosecutor for more information about the local uh, cooperator, but they didn't get any answer. And they said they still believe there's someone higher up in the hierarchy who was responsible for the killing of uh, Jamal Khashoggi, not necessarily the 18 suspects. And I think the moment they realized the Saudis are trying to just further prolong the whole investigation, they decided to go with their own uh, account and it seems quite obvious that they have very strong evidence and this explains why the tone the wording of the statement was pretty much confident about you know what we don't know exactly what happened it's just about time before either you give us more details or we're going to go with our own findings and as we mentioned this uh, change in the narrative uh, somewhat on, on the Turkish collaborator <clears throat> how significant is this part of, the, of all of this Laurie had to remember at the very beginning of this uh, crisis when the Saudi uh, government spoke about rogue killers and, and that the body was uh, handed over to a local collaborator. It really infuriated the Turkish government and they were insisting we need the identity of that uh, collaborator to be uh, revealed. There are two things here. The the Turkish chief prosecutor has been pressing for that particular demand and he said in his statement tonight that the Saudi counterpart was somehow trying to him that they have no information about the collaborator. Now, was it an attempt by the Saudis to give the Turkish government a wrong lead or they are not willing at this particular moment to reveal the identity? But as far as the Turkish government is concerned, they really need to get hold of the remains of Jamal al-Khashoggi. That remains the sole, most important, crucial element of the investigation. For them, the moment they get those details, they will be able to have their final indictment against those responsible for the killing of the 
uh, Saudi journalist. Hashemah Habara, thank you very much. Mike Hanna joins us live now from Washington, D.C. Mike, what's the reaction been from the White House uh, to the Turkish prosecutor's comments? Well, there's been no direct reaction to the specific comments of the Turkish prosecutor, but we have had President Trump saying something on the matter for the first time in days. Uh, President Trump for the past week has made no formal statement on the issue of Jamal Khashoggi. There was a statement released by the White House saying that the administration is still considering what to do, waiting for more information. But this is what President Trump had to say today. I just hope that it all works out. We have a lot of facts. We have a lot of things that we've been looking at. Uh, they haven't betrayed me. I mean, maybe they betrayed themselves. We'll have to see how it all turns out. Uh, we saw Congress questioning the Saudi account weeks ago, Mike. Why has there been no legislation to move ahead with sanctions? Well, let's just walk back over that. A uh, number of weeks ago, as you mentioned, the Senate formally asked the president uh, to uh, introduce the McGinsky Act. That's an act that provides for human rights accountability by states or individuals around the globe. Now, that is a 120-day uh, deadline. That has been in place. Then you had the House of Representatives sending a letter to President Trump saying that he should expedite that request from the Senate to invoke the Beginsky Act to start considering whether or not sanctions should be imposed. So there have been moves from Congress, very strong moves. Uh, we've also heard in the past day or so a group of Democrat lawmakers planning to uh, attempt to stop uh, Congo congressionally sanction any nuclear talks between the U.S. and Saudi Arabia. So there are all these moves. There's only one problem, though. At the moment, with the midterm elections a few days away, uh, Congress has been in recess. So there's been no opportunity for Congress to actually act on any of these matters. The first action will come when Congress reconvenes after the midterm elections. But they, what they have been doing is making quite clear that they want to try and keep some kind of pressure on the administration. Uh, both Republican and Democrat have indicated that this is the case. And we are likely to see some movement in Congress once they return after the elections. Mike Hanna, thank you very much. Pro-government newspapers in Turkey are raising more questions about the investigation into the death of Jamal Khashoggi, and especially why Saudi Arabia's top diplomats in Istanbul aren't being questioned. Turkish prosecutors suspect the consul general and station chief facilitated the murder. Seyna Khoda has more from Istanbul. The mastermind of the operation to kill Jamal Khashoggi is how Turkey's pro-government media describes this man. The military attaché of the Saudi consulate, Ahmed El Muzaini, seen here at Istanbul's second airport, Sabiha Goksen, leaving for Riyadh on September 29. A day earlier, Khashoggi had visited the Saudi consulate for the first time to request documents confirming his divorce. Mozaini was there and is believed to have scheduled the Saudi journalist's appointment on October the 2nd, the day he was killed. The attaché returned to Istanbul on the 1st of October and intelligence sources say briefed the Saudi consul general, Mohammed El Otaibi, on the plan put together in Riyadh to kill Khashoggi. The same day, Mozaini was reportedly spotted in a consulate car scouting the Belgrade forest on the outskirts of Istanbul. He flew out of Atatürk airport at 9 p.m., hours after the Saudi journalist was killed. The telephone traffic began after Khashoggi left the consulate on September 28th. Muzaini called Ahmed Asiri, the deputy head of intelligence, to tell him about Khashoggi's visit and was told to immediately travel to Riyadh. The Turkish intelligence believes Muzaini received the direct order to kill Khashoggi in Saudi Arabia. And this wasn't just the work of Saudi intelligence. The order came from the crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman. Turkish investigators identified what they call the hit squad, 15 Saudi men, including an autopsy expert and agents linked to Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Investigators also identified three other Saudis who arrived a day before the murder. The intelligence leaks and statements from Turkish officials in recent weeks point to a premeditated plan at the highest levels of the Saudi government to kill Khashoggi. But there are many questions that remain unanswered. Turkey, for example, wants to know why Saudi Arabia is not interrogating the Saudi consul general and the military attaché. The Saudi consul general allowed Reuters news agency reporters to visit the consulate four days after Khashoggi disappeared. El Otebi was mocked for opening cupboards and filing cabinets to show Khashoggi wasn't there. 
I would like to confirm that Jamal is not at the consulate nor in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and the consulate and embassy are working to search for him. After two weeks of repeated denials and changes to their account of what happened, Saudi ministers eventually admitted Khashoggi was killed inside the consulate, but insisted it was an accident during a fight. But in the leaks, Otebi was not depicted as the man who called the shots. All the evidence presented by Turkey proved to be true. It showed Saudi Arabia lied, and Saudi Arabia was forced to backtrack its narrative many times. Turkey wants to close the case, but Saudi Arabia is not cooperating with the information that is needed. Turkish investigators suspect the plan was not just to kill Khashoggi, but to implicate Turkey's government in his disappearance. Their plan backfired because Khashoggi's fiance, Khadija Senjes, was waiting for him outside the consulate. And the double body who left from the back door, wearing Jamal's clothes, was exposed as a fake. Saudi leaders are now the ones in a corner, facing increasing demands for the truth. Zana Khudr Al Jazeera, Istanbul. Imad Hub, uh, Director of Research at the Arab Center in Washington, D.C., joins me now. Thanks very much for being with us. So Turkey released these latest uh, grisly details of uh, the, con the situation that happened with the Khashoggi killing just as the Saudi prosecutor left and, and appeared to be saying that the, the Saudis stonewalled them essentially on, on this. Where, where do you think this goes next for, in terms of what they can get out of the, the Saudi, in, Saudi uh, government on cooperation on this investigation? Well, uh, thanks, Lauren, for having me. Uh, I, I think Turkey is trying to get some answers, some concrete answers from the Saudi royal, from the Saudi authorities themselves, before it itself releases whatever information it has fully, officially, and uh, you know, openly. Uh, I think they were trying to get the Saudis to really admit to this to this heinous crime, uh, but uh, apparently the Saudis are not going to do that, considering that uh, who is involved in it and uh, that it reaches really to the highest echelons of the government. Well, so the Tur Turkish uh, prosecutor has now been invited to Saudi. Is it likely that he'll get any more information there or any more of the answers that they've been demanding? Uh, I, I don't think so. I think, I think this is uh, another attempt at just stonewalling. Uh, you know, if, if, the, if he didn't get any information from the Saudis in, uh, in Ankara or Istanbul, why would he get them from Riyadh? Uh, I, I, I doubt that this is really a sincere effort at really exposing all these things. Although, although they might give him access to some of the uh, accused in uh, perpetrating uh, this, this crime, although, uh, but yet at the same time, I mean, what is he going to get from these people? They're going to tell him whatever the government allows them to tell him. And uh, so I think it's, it's, uh, it, it would be a wasted visit. Now, what about the, the relationship between the Saudis and, and the U.S. at the moment? And we've heard that there was uh, a degree of silence from President Trump on this issue for a few days. And now he's said that he doesn't think the Saudis have betrayed him on the issue right. of the slain journalist. Um, where do you think yeah. that relationship is heading? I think, I think there is... I think there is a great sense of betrayal, uh, uh, to, to put it, uh, <laughs> I think, mildly. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the Trump administration has tried to protect the Saudi, Saudi Arabia since October 2nd, and they have tried to help them actually stonewall and uh, postpone the, the, the really fateful decisions that need to be made here. Uh, Trump himself has been a defender of uh, Mohammed bin Salman and of Saudi Arabia and has expressed his uh, interest in really trying to give them some way out. But uh, still, even uh, he, he knows, I mean, his intelligence services are telling him certain things that, even, that the Turks know and they themselves know about this, uh, this crime. So that's, that's why he's, he's disappointed. Uh, he feels that he's been played. And uh, that's why, I mean, he doesn't like to be disappointed or played, uh, considering who Trump is. Uh, he will say whatever there is to be, and whatever needs to be said. And what do you envisage? I mean, so far they have come up with sanctions on some of the individuals who were arrested originally. What's next, do you think, on the agenda on that front? I, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a very very broad question. This is this is very very open ended. Uh, you know, it's it's interesting that uh, Prince uh, Ahmed bin uh, bin Abdulaziz uh, traveled to Saudi Arabia just uh, last night or the night before, I believe. Uh, it's I mean, why? Well, what is the Trump administration trying to to do here? Uh, uh, in cooperation, by the way, with the British government uh, regarding the return of the of the uh, the younger brother of King Salman, uh, they they. Might 
might have some ideas about how to extricate Saudi Arabia from the problem that it has really put itself in. Uh, and uh, this, this could be an attempt. Uh, on the other hand, they might uh, try to uh, get uh, Mohammed bin Salman to uh, basically uh, give up some of the powers that his father has given him uh, in, in uh, return for uh, uh, some assistance in how to produce this thing. Uh, we know that uh, the people who did what they did to Jamal Khashoggi uh, did not do it, uh, were not uh, rogue killers, like the president said. And he now he knows that he should not have said that. Uh, and uh, you know these people have were were, were ordered to do certain things. So um, uh, maybe maybe uh, something that uh, can be uh, uh, done here would be just to limit uh, what Mohammed bin Salman's uh, the authority of Mohammed bin Salman. Uh, but yet at the same time, who knows? Maybe uh, uh, Prince Ahmed is brought in to try to retrieve some of the credibility that Saudi Arabia has lost over the last month. Amen, Thank you very much indeed for your thoughts. Thank you.